Yes. I didn't get this. Did you ask me or did you ask the group? No. No, I sent it to the group so you can see it. Okay. If it is a... Uh, the, sec the second... The second question. question. Uh, I, will, I will check, okay? What is it? And I will replay you after okay. this. Okay. Shall I have to start? Okay. Do you want me to start? Yes. Yes, you can start, Prof. You can start. Okay. Hello. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Sorry. I'm sorry. You, uh, you said we are going to, on the exam, it's going to be everything. Yes. From the beginning. Yes, because theoretical part is included with applications. And if it is not an uh, exercise, then you will have problem. You will not understand what you are going to do. Because international economics is not only calculation or is not only theory. You have to combine everything and interpret the data. Therefore, uh, such classes uh, should be uh, um, evaluated with the background. You understand? It is not like a high school or lease uh, classes or lectures or courses. You have to combine everything that you know. If, if let's say in mathematics, if you exercise in the first year, uh, the four uh, calculation, uh, summation, subtraction, multiply, and uh, division. And after then, then you have some other applications with two binomials or three by then you have to know everything from the first. You understand? This is how it is going to be. Therefore, if you don't know Hexi Olin theory, you will not apply the Hexi Olin model. You understand? Or the comparative advantages. Or if you don't know the factor uh, price equalization theorem or Stolper Samuelson, then how you are going to interpret the data? That's just the problem because it is combined. Okay, or customs union, for example, that we are going to exercise. If you don't know uh, customs union theory, how you are going to interpret everything properly? Okay. Because it is combined, unfortunately. Okay, let me present you uh, the uh, PowerPoint. Do you see the tariff? Because we stop here. You see, I think the tariff. You, you see, you, 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 you watch now, you, 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 in your screen, you see the tariff? Do you see the tariff? Do you see the PowerPoints? Yes, sir, we can see. Okay. Uh, we are going to the application. We are going to apply calculate tariff. And of course, tariff is a little bit complicated. So we have two different, uh, three different aspects to see in this direction. Therefore, it will be a longer uh, uh, process and uh, application. And then if we have time, then I will put these uh, non-tariff measures. If not, then I will exclude, as I said to you. Okay, tariff, as you know, is a burden for the trade or tariff is a, let's say, a restriction to the trade. Therefore, if we have tariff, we want to know how it is going to affect and change the uh, market structure. Therefore, it is better that you switch your microphone, please. You, sh you close your microphone. Uh, there is effective rate of production. There is no, you, you switch your microphone, please. There is nominal rate of protection. Whose microphone is on? Nominal rate of protection. Nominal rate of protection is measured as the amount of tariff and the non-tariff barriers or measures on its output, ignoring effects of other trade barriers on the industry's input. In contrast to the effective rate of protection is a measure where the percentage change in the domestic value are added after the tariff on input as well as on output are levied or taxed. Therefore, Tariff is uh, sometimes very important uh, measure for excluding the uh, in external or foreign trade. Uh, sometimes it is good for protecting your infant industry, and sometimes it is damaging your welfare and your economy and your international application as we exercise in many aspects this uh, transportation costs or the other applications where we put the terms of trade and shows you how it is 
increasing and enlarging the trade. Therefore, it is important to show you how it is affecting and changing the welfare in this direction. The non, uh, nominal rate of protection is, of course, is supposed to be a unique uh, percentage of tax which is included into the prices. Therefore, let's suppose we have the P1 be the world price of any good, and suppose in non-EU member country, let's say in Turkey, levy are at valorem tariff of T percentage on the commodity X then the price of that commodity X in Turkey will be as P is equal to P1 in bracket 1 plus T. Therefore, nominal rate of protection is now defined as P minus P1 over P1. Therefore, nominal rate of protection is exactly P1 plus P1 multiplied T minus P1, where P1 and minus P1 is going to be zero, and then divided to P1, then this will then gives you the of course, nominal rate of protection uh, protection as T, or the amount of the tariff. Uh, when we are looking from this direction, you are understanding that the nominal rate of protection is somehow is only included to the tariff as a percentage of the tax, let's say 10% percent, uh, percent, uh, tax, which will be included to $10 any X product, and this will make the product price as 11 But effective rate of protection is somehow a little bit different and complicated, and we have to apply in a model to see how it is affecting and changing the uh, international market structure and how it is going to affect the, the country's welfare. The rate of effective protection is defined as the percentage increase in value added per unit in a, an economic activity, which is made possible by the tariff structure relative to the situation in absence of tariff, but with the same exchange rate. And it is more complicated than the nominal rate of protection, as I mentioned to you, for calculating. The effective rate of protection is supposed to be relies on the concept of value added on the commodity. The value added per unit of a commodity in the absence of any tariffs, either on the product or in its, on, or, or in its input, is denoted as V as a dash is equal to P1 minus sigma pj xj. Therefore, the effective rate of protection is now defined as effective rate of protection equal to v minus v dash over v. Therefore, when we apply this v, which is given uh, above, then will be the equation t multiplied p1 minus sigma tj multiplied pj multiplied xj divided to the v, where it is going to be illustrated in an equation for the effective rate of protection. Now it is supposed to evaluate the impact of the tariff measure both on the inputs and the final products to determine whether the tariff is better to apply to the input or to the final product, to the semi-finished or finished product, so-called. In a given example, there is a very simplest, uh, uh, let's say, product, uh, cement, is uh, introduced to you from Turkey. Let's suppose there is one ton of concrete requires 1.2 tons of iron and 0.5 tons of cement as an input to build the concrete blocks. Therefore, as you see, these are semi-finished. Iron and cement are semi-finished, but it can be a finished good in the market. And if you are use this to create or build the concrete blocks, then this will also become an input into this direction. Therefore, we want to know which one is better to buy, whether it is concrete block as a finished goods or uh, iron or cement as a semi-finished, which is going to be as an input uh, evaluated in the, in the customs, in the so-called uh, customs where we are exporting and importing. Uh, the world price of concrete, iron, and cement are respectively is given thousand dollar, three hundred dollar, uh, sorry euro, and hundred euro. Then the V dash is equal to thousand. When we are applying this equation, then thousand minus in bracket one point two multiplied three hundred. These are the inputs plus zero point five hundred. Close the bracket will be 1,000 minus 410, and this will then give us 
590 for the first part of our equation. And now let us suppose there are three different cases to evaluate the effect of tariff measure on the final and intermediate goods, because we want to know whether tariff escalation is realized or not. We want to know whether to apply this tariff to the input is better for a country to import or export, or it is better to uh, apply to the finished goods. <clears throat> In a case, there is a normal, sorry, nominal tariff of 20% of concrete imports, uh, a tariff of 10% on iron and 5% on cement. The effective rate of protection as it is given in the equation, D minus V dash divided to V dash, and this will then, of course, uh, is estimated already, 1,000 in bracket, 20 over 100 minus which is in the sigma summation of this uh, <coughs> calculation, 10 over 100 multiplied 1.2, multiplied 300 minus 5 over 100, because it is the 5% of cement uh, is applied, 0 0.5 and 100 divided to 590. Then this will then gives us 161.5 divided to 590, then the effective rate of protection is supposed to be 27% for, thus, when you are looking to the uh, nominal tariff, which is applied to the concrete is 20%, and when you are looking to the tariff, which is applied to the uh, input, 10% and 5%, all together, the effective rate of protection is very high and very, of course, considerable in this uh, first case. Therefore, if inputs here in iron cement, of course, are subject to a lower tariff than final product, here concrete, of course, then the, of course, other inputs is becoming more protective. In short definition or explanation, effective rate of protection is higher than nominal rate of protection because lower input tariff than final product tariff is creating disadvantages. Due to this reason, we have in the first case, understand that the effective rate of protection will be observed if the nominal tariff is more than uh, input tariff. In the second case, we have the, of course, uniform tariff for the concrete, iron, and cement, which is 20%. And again, we apply this uh, equation uh, again 20 over 100 in bracket 1000 minus 1 1.2 multiplied 300 minus 0 0.5 100 divided to 590 then this will then of course 20 over 100 590 divided 590 then this will then gives you 20 percent of course effective rate of protection and when you observe in this example where are the input and final or the semi, semi and final uh, product uh, tariff or tax rate is equally distributed and realized, then effective rate of protection will become exactly the same as the nominal rate of protection, since we know that the nominal rate of protection exactly the uh, tax, which is uh, in a percentage given as 10% or 20%, exactly what you have got, you will uh, deserve this in the nominal rate of protection. And this will then, of course, transfer to the effective rate of protection in this direction if the uh, input and, of course, final product similarly applied. And in the third case, suppose now there is a tariff of 20% on concrete and 25% on both iron and cement, then we want to know what will be because now we have more uh, or higher percentage of tariff or tax on the so-called inputs, then the final goods, so-called the finished goods, then when we calculate the effective rate of protection, this will become of course 20 over 100 multiplied 1000 minus 25 over 100 in bracket 1.2 again multiplied with 300 minus 0 0.2 multiplied with 100 because this is the summation of this example divided to 590 then the conclusion comes 97.5 divided to 590 then then you see the effective rate of prote uh, protection will become now 16 percent five uh, which is less than the nominal rate of protection thus 
when inputs are subject to higher tariff than final products, effective rate of protection is not realized. Therefore, this is then, of course, the reason that as a conclusion, as a um, uh, regarding to this example, we can uh, conclude or concluding remarks we can uh, make for this example for the tariff escalation is observed as in a given example given when tariff on inputs of a commodity are lower tariff on the final product. It should be lower than the final product as in the first case realized. In the first case, we observe this will then, of course, creating more protection. And if the tariff rate of input is lower than the final product, then this will be a more effective protection for a country. And if the tariff rate of input is higher than the tariff on the final product, this will cause an increase in the profit rate, isn't it? Because it will create more profit. And producer enjoy this. And in other words, reduce tariff expenditure. And tariff escalation, of course, here is realized is a common feature of the developed countries tariff structure in an less developed countries export of raw materials is supported by the government. Therefore, this creates an advantage for developed countries to import, especially from African countries, where they are mostly the raw material exporter from the less developing world I, mo I mentioned here towards to the Union, towards to the EU, European Union, and tariff rate on input products are much lower than the tariff rates on the final product. This is the reason that the, of course, rich and of course, uh, large scale producers enjoying to buy or ex uh, import from African countries this raw material because it is uh, very highly protective because in the Union there is almost zero tariff on this uh, kind of tariff at the end of the day this will then create more protection for their products and of course the uh, non-member african countries or asian countries here is um, somehow is exercising uh, some retarded uh, uh, trade activities and relation with the uh, world Effective rate of protection, as I mentioned to you, is the impact of tariff is uh, often different from its stated amount. And the effective rate measures the total increase in domestic production that the tariff makes possible compared to free trade. And domestic producers may use imported inputs or intermediate goods subject to various tariffs, which affect the calculation. And effective rate of protection when tariff rates are low on raw materials and components, but high on finished goods, the effective rate on finished goods is actually much higher than it appears from the nominal rate. And this is then the reason, as I mentioned to you, most of the develop, developing countries are subjected to raw material exportation. And the, of course, developed world enjoy this uh, import towards their country because it is not a uh, uh, problem for their market structure. And avoiding and postponing tariffs, production sharing and special treatment for foreign assembly using domestic components, bonded warehouse and foreign trade zones is also illustrated. Tariff and welfare effect is of course becoming another problem in the economics. This was the first case for introducing you to see how the tariff is affecting and changing the economy. Now we are looking to the other side of the tariff or the tax to evaluate now the uh, consumer side and the producer side. The consumer surplus and producer gain is going to be subjected here. And we are going to evaluate now the consumer effect and producer effect, whether it is contributing or damaging to the consumer welfare or producer gain. The difference between the price buyers would be willing to pay and what they actually pay. And the producer surplus, the revenue producers receive above, above the minimum amount required to introduce induce, sorry, them to produce a good. As you are observing here, consumer surplus is this uh, triangle where it is right angled given to you. And as much as it is increasing and enlarging towards to the zero, towards to the origin, it is increasing the welfare. And as much as increasing up towards to the four, towards to the B, 
this will then reduces the welfare of the consumer. And when we are looking to the second graphic, the producer gain is going to be zero when it is started with B. And as much as the price is going up, the producer gain is here is enlarging and increasing as much as the price goes up. This will then enlarge and increase the producer gain. And therefore, there is a contradiction between consumer and, uh, consumer and producer surplus. And this is in the problem. And we want to evaluate and we want to apply an example to see whether it is really damaging both parties or it is contributing any. And we want to also put into this example the government, so-called the state, to see how it is affecting and changing the market. In, of course, a very, very popular statement, Begatai neighbor policy is, of course, not good because imposing an op optimum tariff is a bigger day. Begatai neighbor policy that could invite retaliation because when you are applying tariff, vice versa, the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, cooperative country or the country that you are applying this tariff will responding to you with the uh, same manner. And this is then, of course, the, another problem in the international trade because this will then bring the zero-sum game. If you know the game theory, as much as uh, you are increasing your trade, uh, your tariff rate, this will reduce the effect of the welfare. And this will then reduce the capacity of the trade bilaterally because you increase the tariff rate, your rivals will increase also, or your cooperative country, or your relation country, your, co your components, your international transaction countries will also responding to you similar manner. And this is then, of course, another problem. After all, if the United States were to impose an import uh, tariff or optimal tariff of 25% on its imports, why should Japan or European Union not levy tariff to 40 or 50 or 25%? This is the problem because as much as you are increasing your tariff and excluding and uh, preventing the international trade access towards to your country, similar will be realized for your product, isn't it? This has happened recently in the America, in the United States. They apply the tariff to the uh, South uh, Korea and Turkey and some others, and they are responding similarly. And this is, of course, the problem in the international trade because this is not a bringing hand and solving the problems when you are applying tariff. On the other side, when we are looking to the tariff effect, we are understanding that tariff is sometimes creating good and sometimes causing bad. Let's see in a simplest small nation uh, model. In figure below, a small nation before trade produces auto at market equilibrium point at E, as determined by the intersection of its domestic supply and demand schedules. At the equilibrium price of 9.500, the quantity supplied is 50 auto, and the quantity demanded is 50 auto either, <coughs> autos either. The graphic is this one you want to see. Did you see the graphic now? Because I have to go back. This is the graphic, which is going to be analyzed. And as you see, in the beginning period, they have 50-50 in equilibrium position, and they have 950. 9,500 price in equilibrium. But we are supposing that they are starting to apply some tariff as it is illustrated here. Let's suppose the economy opened and the free trade were where auto price is now 8,000 because it is reduced in the world market. The price is usually lower than your market. And it is horizontal line where ST plus V is illustrated here in the graphic. ST plus V is illustrated. This is point F illustrate the free trade without tariff. After enlarging the market, because at point E we have the autarky position. And at point F we have the free trade without any tariff sanction, tariff uh, intersection, uh, tariff application. Therefore, as you are seeing, when you are opening your market, to the free trade, this is enlarging and reducing the market price very, very low level. And this will then enjoy and increase the capacity towards to the other nations. And when you are looking again to the D curve, where is the consumer welfare is, and in, in, the, in the welfare, in the welfare economics, in the consumer welfare aspect, this uh, free trade is enlarging and increasing the 
uh, consumable fare from H from G E F to A B C D together because here we have only G E F sorry only G at point E but after enlarging the uh, free trade without uh, tariff tariff transaction we have G plus E F A B C D so it is considerable uh, welfare increase realized for the uh, consumer but then we are looking to the producer where it was realized at point E with a and E it goes to only this uh, triangle the lower triangle where below a is not given it can be any number but it is reducing amount of uh, tariff where it is 20 unit is produced and this is then of course uh, causing internal market in internal uh, industry uh, much probably when you have a free trade but it is enlarging the uh, consumer welfare when we have free trade but on the other side, since we are not alone, we have our producers and we want to maintain our country's production operation process in a sustainable level, then we have to put something to prevent this uh, considerable reduction from point E to point, uh, uh, let's say, on the SD plus B line, there is um, an equilibrium point where F is, but on the other side where the SD line is intersect, with this SD plus V, there is the considerable reduction from 50 units to 20 units. And this is then, of course, not acceptable. Then uh, we have to do something in this direction, isn't it? The free trade, as I mentioned to you, now realized point F, as I illustrated to you, and demanded as 80 units and produced domestically only 20 units. This means that on this graphic, we have to import between this F and between 20 to 80 units, so-called 60 units of product of auto uh, from uh, foreign countries, because our production reduced from 50 to 20 and our consumption enlarged from 52 to 80, then this will then of course enlarging our capacity considerably in the market but our production unfortunately is decreasing and of course must be done something must be done due to this is as i mentioned to you this 60 unit auto which is expected to be import is not possible we have to put some uh, sanction we have to put some tariff sanction or barrier towards to this free trade because we don't want to lose our market and we don't want to lose our domestic production. Therefore, uh, free trade may damage our production and need some protection. This is the reason why the tariff is applied. And suppose management and labor unit and convince the government to levy a protective tariff on auto imports. Assume the small nation impose a tariff of, uh, let's say, 1,000 units per auto, per imported and therefore the overall supply shifts up but by the amount of tariff from SD V to SD plus V plus T where T is here is the tax as you see the second parallel horizontal line where the tariff now is applied and the equilibrium realized at point G and this will then reduce now the uh, consumption from 80 to 60 and increase the production, internal production, from 20 to 40. Therefore, protection is good in the small nation, as you are observed, where it is bringing the market to the internal price level because our internal producer can produce with $9,500 uh, per unit because they are not able to survive. But in the international market, when we join to the international market, our production price now reduced to 9,000 because our uh, tax is shifting the international market price from 8,000 to 9,000. And this will then cause some relaxation for the international, for the internal market. And of course, prevent some uh, product around 20 units 
and of course 20 units uh, consumed will be reduced either and only 20 unit import is expected between 40 to 60 is the of course imported product amount which is illustrated and in this direction we are questioning what to do the overall supply shift upward by the amount of the tariff from stv to sd plus v plus t therefore the consumer surplus was the area a b c d e f g and falls to e f g as you are observing here a b c d is the lost as you are observing here a b c d after increasing the prices because of the tax the welfare of the consumer reduced from g e f a b c d to g e f only because a b c d is now going to be distributed to the producer probably or to the government as a tax uh, revenue and therefore consumer here is definitely the loser and let's look what is happening the revenue effect for the government is 60 minus 40 multiplied with thousand because thousand is the unit for the producer uh, tax then this will then create 20,000 where the area C is illustrated here. This will then go to the government as a tax revenue and redistribution effect 40,000, 9,000 is equal to 300, 600, 3, uh, 360,000. And uh, at free trade, it is 40,000, 40 multiplied, 8,000 is equal to 32 sorry, 320,000, then the differences between these two is the revenue, which is going to be illustrated with A and B, as you are observing here. Then this will then, of course, redistribution effect to the government and to the economy. After this, then we have to question, as the tariff encourages domestic production to rise from 20 to 40, as you see here, tariff shift the tariff from 20 to 40, but not 50, the producers must pay part of the increased revenue as a higher cost of producing the increased output deficit or described by area B, which is 10,000. The triangle uh, formula is H multiplied B divided two is then of course 20 multiplied 1,000 divided two is equal to 10,000. This is then of course so-called the B area and A, sorry, B and D areas, these small triangles are the dead weight effects. And D is the consumer effect or the consumption effect. And B is the production effect where it is uh, gone lost results of this tariff. And A is the producer gain and A, B, C, D is the uh, consumer lost or lose. And C is the government tax revenue, as you are observing in this small nation example. If you have any question, you ask me. If not, then I will go to the large nation now. The large nation, do you have any question? The large nation tariff trade and welfare effect in the large nation, referring to the figure 44, which is given here. This is in your book 44. Uh, line ST represents the domestic supply schedule and line D rep deficit the home demand curve or describe the demand uh, uh, demand curve. And autarky equilibrium realized at point E, as you are observing here, again, in autarky we have the E, in free trade we have the F, and in the, of course, uh, inter, uh, trans, uh, let's say inter, intervention to the market with the uh, tariff, the equilibrium realized at point G. Here, suppose the market equilibrium shifts from point F to point G, while the market price rises from ST plus V, which is 7,800. This is then the, of course, supposed to be equilibrium price was 8,000 and the rise to 8,800 after the tax, as you observe on the graphic here. It is shifted from 780 to 8, 800. And this is then, of course, the amount of the tax which is applied to the market. And after this application, you are observing here, with free trade, as I said to you, equilibrium rise at F, the importing nation faces a total supply schedule of ST plus V. And this schedule 
shows both domestic and foreign producers together offer to the domestic consumers and meet tariff at point G equilibrium realized where a specific tariff thousand unit is applied and ST plus V plus T is observed in this curve as you are seeing. This is then of course the second uh, almost parallel line to the x-axis quantity auto which is not parallel but somehow parallel the s d plus v plus t which is the of course after the free trade amount of the uh, world price will be added with the tax and increase the price level to 8800 and reduce the amount of the uh, production which is going to be consumed in the market from 110 to 90 and increase the production from 30 to 50 after this application. And of course, then here we have to calculate again the distribution effect and of course welfare effect. Uh, <clears throat> market equilibrium shifts from point F to point G while the producer price rises from ST plus VBR 7,800 7,800 equilibrium price was 8,000 and rise to 8,800 after tax. Consumer surplus falls by an amount equal to area ABCD. As you see here, the ABCD again is reduced here because the tariff amount shifting the welfare, uh, reducing the welfare and shifting upward. And this is then of course not good. And consumer surplus, as I said to you, reduced uh, to ABCD with the area is, is gone. And the area A is the totaling 32,000 represented redistribu redistributive effects. The area A here is going to be the producer and the is amount is transferred from domestic consumers to the producer. This is somehow the welfare will be distributed from consumer to the producer. This is realized in inflation either. When the prices goes up, the prices will be distributed and capital will enlarge and increase in the producer side. Therefore, consumption effect always negatively affected and production or producer always positively affected from this tariff and government is also enjoying this uh, tariff because they are getting some resources. And consumption and production effect is again B and D here, these uh, triangles where it is calculated with H, B, H base divided two. This is then the, of course, right angle uh, calculation from your mathematic. And the area C is the domestic revenue for the government, 40,000, 40 multiplied 8,000 is 32,000, is then 32,000 is going to be the government uh, revenue. Who pays for import restriction? Domestic consumers faces increased cost, as you are observing here. Lower income consumers are especially hurt in this direction. And of course, this is not acceptable. And the, of course, overall net lose Realize here we are the debt weight loose for the consumption and uh, production effect realized at point A and point B and D. And export industries face higher costs for imports, input, sorry, and cost of living increases as you are observing because of the tariff and other nations may retaliate or uh, responding to this tariff with higher tariff, which is of course the create the similar or probably the more um, uh, negative effects to the international market and reducing the welfare of the world nations. And this is, of course, not good. This is the reason, as I said to you many times, the WTO attack because uh, tariff in the developed nation is still intact. Either it is non-tariff measures or tariff, but it is applying to the third world where they are having cheaper and, of course, uh, comparative advantages in the international trade because of these uh, tariff and non-tariff measures and these sanitary, phytosanitary measures which is directed to the, the international markets to the to also the international to also the developed nations. They are reducing their capacity and this is then of course not good as I mentioned to you. The arguments for trade restrictions there is of course job protection aspect which can be accepted. It is, of course, somehow protecting the internal market, uh, labor market. It is fairness in trade, sometimes level of playing field of sometimes protecting domestic standard of living is acceptable. But fairness, where is the fairness? Because as I said to you, since 
the comparative advantages theory is valid and of course can be extended to the international market why then they are applying this uh, tariff and non-tariff measures to the uh, so-called the southern part of the world where they are having comparative advantages and resources abundantly and can produce effectively and they are insisting the developed nations insisting to put this uh, tariff and non-tariff measures sanitary phytosanitary measures wrapping labeling uh, hygienic or pesticide uh, control these things then excluding also this uh, third world production and of course exportation towards to these nations uh, this is also equalization of the production cost is of course another uh, aspect this is another argument it is sometimes it is realized realized sometimes not and infant industry protection it is also acceptable as i said to you if you have your infant industry and you want to protect until this developed you can put some tariff protection but there are so many uh, tariff and non-tariff measures which is not accepted in this direction therefore uh, tariff application and non-tariff measures somehow is uh, uh, somehow supping the international trade because they don't want cheap production and cheaper exportation and importation towards to their countries and this is the reason developed nations reducing the international trade and fair trade uh, relations in the world and political and social reasons of course as i said to you sometimes political some science social reasons social reasons because they the international trade and international transactions i mean peoples and individuals and labor uh, transactions and of course um, free movements sometimes creating problems as we are observing currently in africa and uh, in afro Af afro american people killed in america and people attacking everywhere in Ka minnesota minnesota you observe probably in uh, colorado people attacking uh, to the uh, local markets because uh, some poli one policeman killed uh, one african afro american uh, person therefore it's sometimes creating problem it is political reasons because they don't want to uh, damage their industries their economies this can be acceptable but political reasons, as i said to you they don't want foreigners as an immigrant as a fugitives towards their country these are the also problems which is um, exercise in this direction and of course uh, supply of protectionism is also as i mentioned to you is sometimes is creating fair trade is sometimes creating sometimes not creating is another history this should be also discussion topic in a long uh, period of time which we don't have here and the cost of society of restricting trade is also a problem because it costs too much as i mentioned to you already because of this uh, afro american uh, person who killed uh, create too much uh, social uh, aspect towards to the international markets and magnitudes of the adjustment cost to free trade is also another problem because every market especially in the developed world the uh, wages are very high and they are not able to adjust to the lower market especially china mexico and some others south asian uh, market the wages are very cheap and very low therefore they are not able to compete and create some challenging power in this international market and this is then another aspect to reduce and uh, create some problem to the economy and public sympathy is also another hurt by free trade is supposed to be is another problem in the economy which is sometimes acceptable sometimes not acceptable and of course demand for protection depends on also amount of the import competing industry where the comparative disadvantages is realized as i mentioned to you if you have higher wages and higher cost how you are going to become a relative lower cost advantages in the international market how you have to put these sanitary phytosanitary measures tariff non-tariff measures towards the uh, non-member countries or towards the international market for preventing this competitive market in your country or in your markets and the level of import penetration is also another problem which is also sometimes creating a problem and causing some negativities to the international market and level of concentration in the affected sectors is also another problem this will also create some negative effects and damage the industries which is going to be protected and degree of export dependency in this sector is also responsible uh, problem for this uh, let's say protection of course 
consumer and producer surplus should be analyzed either here for being able to estimate because in the example I have given you some graphical illustration here I'm going to give you how you're going to see this distribution from consumer to producer or from producer to con uh, consumer therefore we have to estimate the consumer surplus and producer surplus together here the consumer surplus and producer surplus in a given example is illustrated with the graphic quickly uh, here there is a demand and the supply curve for a product which is which where it is going to be the demand curve is decreasing lower prices are associated with higher quantities demanded and higher prices are associated with lower quantities demanded and the demand curve are often shown as if the were if it were linear but there is no reason they have to be therefore we have to calculate the consumer surplus by uh, consumer surplus and producer surplus by using this integral equation where you are knowing from your mathematical background given in a demand function p is equal to delta q and p is equal to delta q and the supply function is supposed to be p is equal to sq and the equilibrium point is, is supposed to be q star and p star the consumer surplus is then therefore is the integral delta q multiplied delta q minus pq where it is the integral uh, integration of the equation and producer surplus is vice versa pq minus you're going to subtract the um, so-called revenue from the cost the first one is from cost to revenue and here from revenue to cost pq minus integral of this supply equation so-called will be subtracted and then you will calculate the consumer surplus or producer surplus in the economy let's have an example here suppose the demand for the product is given by p is equal to minus 0.8 q plus 150 150 and p is equal to minus 0.8 q plus 150 therefore the supply for the same product is the is given by p s q is 5.2 q and s q is 5.2 q for both functions q is the quantity and p is the price in dollars find the equilibrium point find the consumer surplus at the equilibrium and find the producer surplus at the equilibrium price here i think there is a mistake with the supply and curve and i have to correct it because i didn't i miss i catch up this but you will understand better the equilibrium point where the supply and demand function are equal solving minus 0.8 q plus 150 is 5.2 q 5.2 q and minus open 0.q plus 150 is equal to 5.2 q gives q as 25 the consumer surplus here is then of course with the integration 0.25 sorry 0 to 25 then minus 0.8 q plus 150 delta q minus 130 where 25 is supposed to be calculated with this derivation then we have 20 250 and this producer surplus again 130 uh, with 25 will be this 25 will be put into the equation and you will find this 130 then in the integral this of course 25 will be multiplied 5.2 q where the integral is taken then 1625 is uh, ob obtained and from this uh, calculation we are getting this q s and q d of course here this surplus and uh, tax effect is illustrated here we have another example for the tax effect for the for calculating and estimating the tax in a given example qs and qt qd is supposed to be six and ps and pd is supposed to be eight with no tax this is given in an equation which we don't have here i don't put it here and suppose the government imposed six unit of tax pd is equal to ps plus six because six unit is tax is applied to the uh, supply curve therefore supply curve is going to be increased six unit i mean the price will be increased to the six unit or either you are going to exclude it, uh, subtract it from the equation this will shift supply two plus six to eight and this will then bring 
as it is indicated here in the graphic, which is not very clear, you see from two to eight, it is increasing the supply. Therefore, this will bring the equilibrium to 12 and the quantity produced to four, as you are observing here. Four and two and 12, and from six to eight, it goes to to four to twelve, the new equilibrium. As seen on the table before, the tax consumer surplus was ABC, where H multiplied B base divided two is equal to twenty minus eight multiplied six over two will gives us thirty six, and the producer surplus was again eight minus two multiplied six divided two. Then this is again H base divided two. This uh, triangle here, this triangle. You see these triangles here. It's not very clear, but if you try to see enlarge it and see, you will understand. Then you will have this uh, equilibrium. You will have this equilibrium for the producer surplus as 18, and consumer surplus and producer surplus all together is 42, 44, 54. Sorry. Then this is of course A B C G H E F A B C. This upper level. B, C, G, E, H, F, all together, all then will gives you the consumer and producer surplus together because we have to calculate the new equilibrium as it is indicated. And then when you are going to get this after tax and consumer surplus plus producer surplus, then A, B, C, H, G, now you are going to reduce this E and if where it is distributed to, you see here, E and F is going to be excluded from the system because these are the dead weight effects on this example, which is given here, because after the tax applied, this is changing the market structure, as you are observing. Before it was all together, A, B, E, F was the, A, B, E, F was the uh, co consumer surplus and G, H, F, was the producer again, but after applying the tariff altogether, it is reduced, and of course we should exclude this from the graphic because E and F is now excluded, is gone, is lost from the system, and this B, C, G is supposed to be the governmental revenue, and A uh, is the consumer welfare, and G, H is the, it is given also here, B, C, G, you see, is the, on the graphic is given, consumer surplus with no tax, A, B, E, C, F, and producer surplus, F, G, H, where it is 18, and the government receipt zero before tax. After tax, it is B, C, G, as I mentioned to you, and impact B, C, G is again 24, and impact of the uh, tax is supposed to be minus B, minus C, minus E, because it is reduced, and gone and producer surplus minus F minus C because it reduces the producer surplus. It goes somewhere else, is, is calculated as 10. And government receipt from tax is estimated as 24. And net benefit is supposed to be 48 with tax and impact is supposed to be is six because 44, 54 minus 48 is going to be six unit is disappeared because this Three, two triangles E and F is evaporated from the system and that weight zero is given here is E and F is six and E F again is six, which is not known where it's going. It's the dead weight impact. And then we have another example here where we have 40 minus 2Q is equal to PD and 10 plus 3Q is equal to PS. After we are applying again the five unit of tax, what will be the equilibrium for producer surplus, consumer surplus, or consumer welfare and government revenue effect before and after tax and redistribution and revenue effect is asked in this question. When we are solving this equation with without tax, the equilibrium position is 6 and 29, 28. And when we are applying this uh, five unit of tax, to the supply curve, then we have again uh, minus five because it should be excluded either from the price because this five unit tax is going to be the going to be distributed to the government as you are observing on the graphic. Therefore, it should be excluded. It is actually included to the equation, but excluded from the uh, let's say 
price because it is not profit. It is going to the government. The tax is collected by the government and it is a burden for the consumer and for the producer. And the new equilibrium after having this equation, we have five and 30. For finding price level after tax, we put new quantity to old equation because we have to find the uh, new equilibrium. And of course, with the old equation, then PS is equal to 10 plus 3Q and 10 plus 3 in bracket 5 will give us 25. And of course, this will be then, of course, giving us where the intersection point is 15 for QS is equal to 0. And the graphic is illustrated here as like this in the first um, places where the equilibrium was 28 and 6. And in the second, it goes to 5 to 30. And the intersection points is 15 and 10 and above is 40. Then we can calculate now the surpluses again. Let's see the tax effect here. With no tax, ABC key is without tax, the consumer surplus. EFDGH is again here, the uh, producer surplus without no tax, without, without tax, sorry. And government revenue is zero because there is no tax. And net benefit is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, G, H, and K. And that weight is zero here because there is no tax. And after tax applied, the consumer surplus reduced to A. Uh, producer surplus increase E, sorry, G and F. G and F is decreasing amount increase. Realize because K and H is redistributed to the government and E and D is again redistributed to the government. Therefore, this increase, part of this increase is going to government. And therefore, this is somehow causing some negative effect to the economy because producer reduces government enjoy this E, D, C, B and consumer enjoy to, sorry, reduce their welfare to A from A, B, C, K, and net benefit A, B, C, D, E, F, K, and that way, as I said to you, after tax is going to be K and H, and the impact is supposed to be negative B, C, K, B, C, K, as you're observing here, this negative effect, the producer negative effect, E, D, H, E, D, H, yeah, these are going to the government because it's gone, and uh, net benefit is not created here and that weight is K and H is a lost and uh, not known because it is the consumption effect and um, uh, production effect. Now we have again the consumer surplus and producer surplus from this equation. After applying this equation, uh, after getting the integration of this equation, we have 10Q for the, uh, you see 10 plus 3Q is equal to PS, will be integrated. And 10Q plus 3Q square over 2 is the integration. Then we apply to this equation where the total cost is 10 plus 5. You know the total cost is uh, wages multiplied labor here minus uh, real interest rate multiplied with capital. And therefore, when we are applying this equation, then we have this total cost 87.5 and total revenue is supposed to be P multiplied. Q, Q is equal to 5 multiplied 25 is equal to 125. Or as I said to you, total cost can be estimated with this integral, which we are going to put into the equation, then you subtract this total revenue from total cost, then you will get 125 minus 87.5, then this will then gives us 37.5. This is the producer surplus, so-called the profit, which is expected to be redistributed to the uh, producer. And this is an example for understanding the tax effect. Unfortunately, uh, I have to finish this class here because if we start to the non-tariff measures, it will go one hour more or maybe more than one hour. Then we can do it. I better stop here. I think this will be enough for you. If you have any question, uh, I can answer. If don't, then I will finish it.
and I will upload your uh, slides to the system. Do you have any question? Doctor? Yes, please. Can you check the question I sent in the group? I don't have my mobile, but I will check it and responding to you. Okay, okay, thank you. Is that okay? Because yes. I yes, have to check, I don't have my mobile, it's in the, in, in the ground floor. It's okay. In the first, okay. First floor. Thank you. Do you have any question? Mm, I don't have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any question about the exam or anything else? Because we have next week no class. If not, then I will finish it. Is that okay? Yes, it's okay. So, this is, is this everything, sir, for the exam? This is the last Hello? Thing. Yes, up, up to here. You have to study up to here until the tariff. The chapter five is included, tariff. That's all. That's all. Non tariff measurement. Yes. Uh, at least if you can post like this question is too much it's better because we do we do not know in the midterm which one is too much and which one is one mark which one is too much and which one is one mark we do not know during the midterm so at least you can tell us it will be better your grades your no, grades you know you said question your result, 20, your, result your, your result you mean no 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 i mean hello Yes. I, I mean, like, if you put the question, at least if you can tell us, for example, question one, one three is marks, so that we know. Here in the PowerPoint. Now we're saying in the exam. When we're doing the exam, next to the because question, you always... can you include how many marks the question is? Ah, yes, yes, yes. I will put one marks or two marks. Okay, don't worry. Around 30 questions, I will ask you maybe 25, some calculations and some 15 to 20 power um, multiple choice, okay? One point of each or maybe two points of each and then calculation maybe three points because you want 60 points, isn't it? I will put you 60 or 50. How yes. much you want? 60 or 15. How many points? I think Please, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60 points. Okay, 60, 60, 60, 60 is better. Okay, 60, 60, 60, 30, 60. your exam, and 20, then 110, okay? Okay. Okay, then I will put the points and the questions. Don't worry. And I will first, I will put in the exam first the calculations and then, and I will give you enough time, okay? Okay, okay bro. Hello? Thank bro. you. Prof. Yes. Prof. Yes. The 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 calculation questions are they going to be multiple choice? Yes, yes. We don't have what? any other choice because when you are putting the answer Sorry. to the system, you are not able to put correctly. Therefore, it is going to be wrong. Therefore, I have to put the answer into the answer uh, multiple okay. choice. Okay. But you have to okay, remember. There will be no question. Okay, how many, how many questions? How many around questions? Around 30, is it I don't 30, know. 30, 30, 30, what do you have about? Is it 30? 30, yes. Around 30. 30. Around 30. 30 okay. there, will be, there will be two points or three points, some questions, three points, some questions, one point, some questions, two points. It's like this, okay? But as I said to you, there will be no flashback to the questions. You have to answer and go back, go further. Okay. Okay, bro. Okay. okay, no problem. Bro. bro. Yes. Bro. Yes, I'm listening. How many hours? I don't know. I don't know. Around 70 minutes, maybe enough. We will see, okay? Uh? 70 minutes, maybe. You are still the timing. Bro. Bro. We are yes. bro. You give us 25 percent. 50 minutes, we could not finish. <laughs> now we are now giving 30, 30 minutes. Huh? <laughs> What do you want? I don't know. I said you give us. I said you give us twenty-five questions, sixty minutes. We cannot finish it. Now you are giving thirty questions, seventy minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? We will see. Okay. Bro, at, least, see. at least. At least. Of, if it is uh, too much. That, Okay, okay. If it is uh, too much, then I will make it eighty. Okay, eighty minutes. Don't worry. Okay. If it is too much calculation. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, you want too much study hard, okay? Hadi, görüşürüz. No, we don't want too much too much calculation. Okay, Maybe okay. ten. Ten. Okay, I will Please, do it. Don't. Yes, yes. yes. Don't worry. Tamam. I will do the best. Okay. Okay. Thank you then. See you then okay. after next week. Next week we don't have class, okay? Okay. 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 Bye bye. Bye bye. Doctor. Yes. Can you download for us like uh, three? Or yes, yes. Four I will upload a calculation example. Yes, yes. I will do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.